Good morning, I'm Rick Kyle, Division Chief of Investigations for the Denver Police Department. My name is spelled R-I-C-K-K-Y-L-E. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to provide an update on this case that resulted from the recovery of human remains at a residence in the 2500 block of South Quitman Street. Recognizing that we're, there would be a lot of interest in this case, we arranged this press conference to walk through the chronology and answer any questions that we can answer after we presented that chronology. First, I want to share our condolences with the families that are impacted by this situation. Losing a loved one is hard enough, but when the loved one's remains are mishandled, it just adds to the grief and causes further unnecessary pain. This has been a very complex and taxing investigation, and I want to commend the thorough and compassionate work of the Denver Police Major Crimes Bureau and Crisis Services Bureau along with the members of the Denver District Attorney's Office, as well as the Office of the Medical Examiner. In, ad in addition to investigating the criminal aspects of this case, our teams are working with the impacted families and ensuring that they receive the support that they need. To provide further details of this case, I'd like to introduce Commander Matt Clark of our Major Crimes Bureau. Good morning, I'm Commander Matt Clark. Uh, I oversee the uh, Major Crimes Division for the Denver Police Department. Thank you for being here today as we provide information regarding the active investigation that's being conducted by the Police Department, the Denver District Attorney's Office, and the Denver Office of the Medical Examiner related to the discovery of a deceased woman's body as well as the recovery of numerous professionally cremated remains that were found in a residence uh, in Southwest Denver. This is a unique investigation. It's been difficult for the investigative team, not only because of the complexity of the case, uh, but also the concern and sensitivity for the families who have been impacted. The investigative team has been working diligently on this case since the discovery on Tuesday, February 6, 2024. In addition to the investigative agencies, the professional staff of the department's victim services team continues to play a critical role in our outreach efforts to families. I'll provide background information regarding the recovered remains and detail what we've learned through the investigation to this point. At the end, I'll attempt to answer any questions uh, with the understanding that we're still working to connect with some of the families that were impacted in this case. Uh, and we're also working to understand the operations of the funeral director and his business. Additionally, we do anticipate a criminal filing against an individual and want to ensure a successful prosecution. On Tuesday, February 6, 2024, the Denver Sheriff's Department served an eviction at a single family residence in the 2500 block of South Quitman Street. A sheriff's deputy was standing by while the homeowners removed the tenant's property from the residence. During the process of removing the property, the homeowner discovered several boxes in the crawl space that were determined to be temporary urn boxes containing cremated human remains, which I will, I will refer to as cremains. Investigators from both the Denver Police Department's Homicide Unit and the Denver Office of the Medical Examiner responded to the residents to examine and recover the items. Nearly three dozen temporary urns were located, some of which were empty. For context, these urns are black plastic boxes similar to the size of a shoebox. The owners found that the tenant was storing an inoperable hearse in the backyard of the residence. As part of the eviction process, that vehicle was towed from the backyard to the street. While looking in the vehicle, investigators discovered additional urns inside that vehicle. Detectives entered the vehicle to recover the urns, and upon doing so, discovered the body of a deceased woman who was covered with a blanket in the back of the vehicle. A search warrant was sought to recover the body and further process the scene. The woman's body was removed and transported to the medical examiner's office. The medical examiner's team has since confirmed the body was that of a 63-year-old woman who died in August of 2022. Through the investigation, detectives have determined the woman's remains have likely been stored and concealed in the hearse since shortly after her passing. The outreach team has met with the woman's family and learned the family previously received remains from the funeral home that they believe were uh, their loved one. Investigators also executed a search warrant on a U-Haul vehicle that was recovered in front of the residence. Through that process, they located six additional urns containing cremains. All the recovered cremains appear to be associated with individuals who passed away between 2012 and 2021. At this point, we believe we have recovered the remains of uh, at least 30 individuals. 
The investigative team is currently cross-referencing information from tags and labels that were found with the cremains uh, to attempt to identify uh, the families. The investigators and advocates are working to connect with each family regarding the discovery. As you can imagine, these are extremely difficult conversations to have, and the information comes at a shock to many of the families, um, several of whom believe they had the entire remains of their loved one. Through the investigation, it was determined that the tenant of the residence on South Quitman was 33-year-old Miles Harford, H-A-R-F-O-R-D. Mr. Harford operated a funeral service between 2012 and 2022 in Littleton, Colorado, that was called Apollo Funeral and Cremation Services. Mr. Harford appears to have experienced financial trouble in his business. At times, he was not able to cre complete cremations to provide remains to families for services. Unbeknownst to families who sought services from Apollo Funeral Services, Mr. Harford may have occasionally provided family members with another person's cremated remains in lieu of their family members' remains so services could be held. Through conversations with the families, it has come to light that many experienced delays in obtaining cremated remains from Apollo and Mr. Harford. Some expected pieces of jewelry with their loved one's cremains but never received those. Investigators also learned that Apollo Funeral Services completed cremations for individuals who were indigent or persons whose next of kin was not known. The team is working to determine if the services Mr. Harford provided in those cases account for some of the, cremation, uh, the cremains recovered at the residence. In regard to the deceased individual recovered in the hearse, it appears Mr. Harford had accumulated significant debt with several metro area crematories. As a result, these businesses would no longer work with Mr. Harford and he was unable to complete the cremation that had been prearranged by the family of the woman. Mr. Harford appears to have placed the woman's body in the back of the hearse and concealed her with blankets until she was recovered on Tuesday, February 6, 2024. Mr. Harford provided the family with the remains of another person. Investigators have obtained an arrest warrant for 33-year-old Miles Harford for investigation of abuse of corpse, forgery, and theft. These charges at this point are related specifically to the woman's body that was recovered from the hearse. At this time, we do not believe there is a connection between the case involving Mr. Harford or Apollo Funeral Services and the extensive funeral home investigation that's occurring in Fremont, Colorado. We have been in contact with investigators uh, working that case. We've set up a hotline and would ask anyone who did not receive the cremated remains of a loved one from Apollo Funeral and Cremation Services or Mr. Harford to call that number. That number is 720-913-6610. 720-913-6610. This will put callers in contact with a member of the department's investigative outreach team so we can figure out how to best uh, assist them. As I mentioned, this is a complex case that involves some very difficult conversations with families. We currently have two specific focuses. The first is compassionately caring for the families that were impacted by this case. These families are being supported by the department's victim services team and the staff at the Denver Medical Examiner's Office. The second involves a determination regarding crimes that may have been committed by Mr. Harford or anyone else. Investigators have previously been in contact with Mr. Harford, Harford excuse me, uh, who is believed to be in the metro area, and we are now working to facilitate uh, his arrest on the warrant we obtained. We anticipate additional charges may be filed once we have a better understanding of Mr. Harford's operations and his handling of the human remains that may or may not have been provided to families in this case. The determined on criminal charges will be made by the Denver District Attorney. Before I conclude, I want to address a potential question uh, that may also be a concern for several of the families uh, who work with Apollo Services uh, for cremation services. This is regarding the challenges associated with identifying individuals post-cremation. Once the cremation process is completed, obtaining viable DNA uh, samples becomes a very difficult task due to the intense heat and the chemical changes that occur. I've had several uh, conversations with our forensic scientists in this crime lab and have learned the extreme temperatures involved in the cremation process alter the molecular structure of DNA, often rendering it fragmented and highly degraded. That makes it exceedingly difficult to extract genetic material sufficient for identification. And consequently, traditional DNA testing methods often prove ineffective, significantly limiting our ability to determine the precise identity of the individuals in question. As a result, 
the police department and the medical examiner's office will not be conducting uh, DNA testing on the remains recovered from the residents or those that may have been previously provided to families by Mr. Hartford. We remain dedicated in our mission to, re uh, to respectfully handle the remains that we have and supporting the impacted families. Um, I would like to share that the family of the woman whose body was recovered from the hearse is requesting privacy in this. I'd like to introduce Denver District Attorney Beth McCann. Good morning, uh, I'm Beth McCann, the Denver District Attorney, and I just want to let you know that we are anticipating filing the, the counts that uh, Commander Clark mentioned, and that would be abuse of a corpse, which is a class six felony, forgery of a public document, which is a class five felony, and theft um, based on a payment of $1,200 that we believe we can prove um, Mr. Harford accepted from the family of the woman um, that, whose body was discovered and of course did not deliver um, what he had promised in terms of cremation. That is a class one misdemeanor. So the abuse of a corpse um, charge as a class six felony, one of the allegations of that charge is that a person commits this crime <clears throat> if they treat the body or remains of any person in a way that would outrage normal family sensibilities. So that's the area where we will be focusing um, when we do have, uh, once Mr. Harford is arrested and we proceed with the case. The forgery of the document, which is a class five felony, relates to what we allege uh, happened in that Mr. Harford provided false information on a death certificate related specifically again to the woman whose body was discovered. And as I mentioned, the theft charge would be based on the amount of money that he um, obtained from that family uh, in guaranteeing that he would then perform cremation of the body, which we allege he did not do. Um, so we do anticipate the possibility of additional criminal charges dependent upon the Denver Police Department further investigation. Um, so I think that's pretty much all I have to say, but happy to answer any questions. Uh, we, we join with the Police Department in expressing our condolences and certainly our great sympathy to any families whose loved ones um, have been impacted by this incident and we certainly want to be as cooperative as possible with the medical examiner's office and the Denver Police Department in contacting families and trying to help them through this process and if possible identify um, others who have been impacted. So um, it is an unusual situation and uh, we intend to fully prosecute once Mr. Hartford is arrested. Thank you. Quick question. Yes. I know it's unusual, but in South Colorado and Pueblo, something similar happened. So don't you guys think that maybe in another jurisdiction within Colorado, this thing is happening and tell me why? Is it lack of supervision or what? So we don't believe that this particular case is related to what's happened in South Colorado. Um, however, um, this situation does uh, raise the possibility that this kind of thing is happening in other parts of the state. And it's my understanding that there is legislation being proposed and contemplated to require licensing and supervision of funeral homes, which I fully support. Um, so that's all I know about that. Yeah. I know you're not a legislator in the future, but I'll ask you, if, does there need to be a better process for identifying cremated remains, knowing what, what Commander Clark just said, that it's going to be next to impossible to try to figure out if some of these families got the right person? Well, presumably, um, in a uh, reputable funeral home, there is adequate identification. Um, so when the body is is obtained, um, in a, at least in my experience, which is not a lot with my two parents, um, you actually view the body in the funeral home and the, the cremation takes place right away. 
but um, I don't think there are any regulations about that or any requirements. So I think that's part of what the legislature will look at and what a regulatory, it'd be through, through the Department of Regulatory Agencies, what kind of regulations they will propose once the legislation is passed. So that's certainly something I think they will look at is how, how secure is that identification process. And usually there's a tag that has the name and birth date and so forth that accompanies the body that then is, is with the cremains. Um, but that's something I'm sure there'll be public hearings about how best to do that if the legislation passes. Have you been in, have you, your office been in touch with the family of the woman that was found? And um, I know that first charge is based on a normal family and whether they'd be outraged. Can you speak, can you speak to the conversations that have had? So my office has not contacted the family. The Denver Police Department has. Um, normally, the way that works is the Denver Police Department uh, works with families um, of crime victims until the case actually gets filed. And once the case is filed, then my office will take over the victim contact. But I know they have a very uh, um, active and successful victim services unit in the Denver Police Department. They are the ones that have been in contact. So I don't know if you want to say anything further. So uh, the investigative outreach team, which is the homicide personnel, members of the medical examiner staff and our victim services team have had direct contact and multiple contacts with the family uh, of the woman who was, whose body was recovered. Um, they're devastated, they're shocked, they were hurt by this. They um, believed and they were processing their grief uh, with the remains that they had and had had services with that and then they come to find out that that was not the person uh, that was processed and in fact she was being um, held in that in that hearse there. Knowing that some of the complications with this, is there any assurance that like I know there are going to be a lot of families with questions that you're going to be able to get justice for those families? So in terms of the, there are a number of the cremains that we have that have uh, identification tags or um, the possibility of us connecting with families and, and either reuniting them with those remains um, or processing and determining how those were handled uh, to determine if there's criminal uh, culpability on, on Mr. Harford's part. So that's, that's kind of our focus at this point. I guess, Deanna, we can't back to the, yeah. to the, uh, the first charge. And can you speak? Can you speak to um, what a normal family would feel in this situation? Well, I think a normal family would be outraged, um, which is what the statute provides. Um, you know, it's it's there's enough grief associated with the death of a family member, um, and then to understand and realize that the trust you placed in the person that was going to um, do the cremation and provide you with the remains, uh, you've lost that trust and you don't really know, you know, what happens to the family member. I mean, in this case, they do know that this woman's body was in this hearse for a considerable amount of time. And um, I think most family members would be outraged by that kind of behavior. And certainly, grieved considerably. Taking in consideration these two horrific episodes about funeral homes, what are the best recommendations that, that you can advise for people to follow in order to ensure that they are grieving their own body and not somebody else? Wow, that's a difficult question. Um, a, little bit, a little bit outside my expertise, but um, what I would recommend is that they have the process where they can view the body of their loved one in the actual funeral home at the time the cremation takes place, um, which is what happened with my parents. But I don't know if Commander Clark or, uh, has a better answer to that. I think given what's been happening, I think your people probably need to um, do a little more research before they choose a funeral home um, and 
look for reviews or recommendations. Maybe family members have used this funeral home in the past. Um, I think, unfortunately, and I think Commander Clark alluded to this, that uh, oftentimes people don't have a lot of resources to pay for uh, either a burial or um, a cremation. And so um, maybe there, you know, there aren't as many options for people who don't have the ability to pay for a more reputable kind of situation. But I think doing research, learning more about the company that you're working with um, would be my advice. I understand that uh, you guys are conducting like a full investigation about this thing. But let's say that somebody buried their loved one last year. So how do they know? Is, is, is that person or that family wants to know if they already buried the right one and you guys are gonna conduct exhumation process? How that is going to be? So I, I think I'm pretty sure that the Denver Police Department will not be doing um, any kind of exhuming of a body unless there's some sort of probable cause to believe that a crime actually occurred. Um, and there would have to be evidence of that. Um, you know, I think people have to evaluate their own situation and try to come to the best decision that they can within their resources for how to uh, honorably respect their loved ones who have passed away. Um, and that's really an individual family choice. Um, so, but I'm, I don't think, we, we wouldn't get involved unless there was some indication of criminal behavior. I mean, in this case, it was fortunate that the Denver Sheriff had been contacted to come and help with an eviction and in that process, you know, you had a law enforcement person there, the sheriff, who knew that this was not normal or usual and was able to get the Denver Police and the medical examiner's office involved right away. So if, certainly if a family is suspicious about some remains or if they find something in, um, in, a, in a house or in an apartment building, that appear to be remains of, of humans, that's a situation where the police should be called so that they can do an investigation. But you know, we, we have to have some indication that there's some foul play. I have a question for Commander Clark. Um, you said that it's difficult to identify the remains. Is it possible to still identify them? Or what is the process gonna look like to try to return those remains to the right families? So it's it's not impossible. It's it's um, there. I'm told that there are um, processes that can be undertaken to attempt to extract genetic material for identification testing. Um, again, that's not something that we are going to be undertaking. Nor is the medical examiner's office. Um, the process for returning the remains. We do have uh, remains that are in sealed bags and have tags and if we can associate those back through the crematories and the records they have to an individual, um, we're gonna work with the medical examiner staff and they're gonna coordinate uh, the return of those remains to the families that would like those. What will happen with remains that are unidentifiable? Uh, I'm gonna defer to the medical examiner's office on that. I think they'll have a process for, for handling those uh, respectfully. On the suspect, there's a warrant for his arrest. Is he on the run? No, he's not on the run. Mr. Hartford's not on the run. We've been in contact with him. Um, we uh, obtained the warrant. We wanted to get this information and share this information. We're, we're f working to facilitate an arrest of him. And then the other question, the facility where he worked is, I believe, in Douglas County or uh, Jefferson County. Are you working with authorities there to like, look into that building and see if like, there's a further investigation to be done? So, uh, the cremation or the, the Apollo Funeral and Cremation Services was in another county. Uh, we've had communication with those counties. Um, we've looked at the at the building. There's nothing more that can that we can obtain, or there's no need for us to obtain a search warrant for it at this point. Uh, we've again we've had contact with them. In terms of the criminal prosecution and, and working with the other law enforcement agencies, Denver intends to handle. Um, and process the remains uh, and the cases that result from those remains that, are, that we recovered in Denver. And so even though they may have made a sale or, a, or an agreement in a different county, um, we will have a venue and jurisdiction on that. Is there a new funeral provider in that building? Or I, I'm just 
wondering I'm not sure what they've done with it. My understanding is the investigative team has talked to either the current tenant or the uh, landowner there, and, and we are confident that there are no further remains in that facility. Um, but I'm not sure what the storefront is being used as now. Um, there was, uh, there have been conversations uh, with him without getting into the details, recognizing a future prosecution. Um, he does acknowledge uh, that he could not uh, find a crematory to process the woman's body. Um, and then he uh, felt that at that point he, he just stored it in the hearse and then provided remains to the family so they could have their services. That's correct, sir. By Denver Police Denver Sheriff's uh, conducts evictions in the city, and so they were executing a court-ordered eviction at the location, and uh, the homeowners, the ones responsible for moving the property, and they discovered it and alerted the sheriffs. So you've been in contact with them since the arrest warrant was issued? We actually had contact with Mr. Hartford prior to issuing an arrest warrant. Have you talked to him? So is he cooperating with the investigation? He's cooperating with the investigation. So why hasn't he been arrested yet? Uh, we're working to facilitate his arrest. What uh, precipitated the eviction? Uh, I, I'm not sure the, the terms of what caused that. Uh, the attorney, if this guy is found uh, some way, somehow responsible for this, how many years he could actually face behind bars if he will? So the abuse of a corpse is a, an F, felony six, which is our lowest level felony. That carries a one year to 18 month possible sentence. The forgery of the public document, which is a class five felony, carries from one to three years. And theft, which is the misdemeanor, would be up to 364 days in jail. So really three years is probably the maximum um, based on what we know now and what we're able to charge right now. Is your office, your office is gonna try to accomplish some jail time for him or are you gonna work on something else? Well, we'll have to see. Um, we, we don't really make those kinds of decisions until we get the final investigative materials from the Denver police and then we, uh, look at the individual, he'll have an attorney, and there will be discussions about what might be an appropriate resolution of the case. It could go to trial, or there may be some kind of plea agreement. Is there any way in case for a family that has some suspicion, let's say that they are not comfortable with the situation, is there any way that they can connect to your office so they can provide any type of information that might be helpful to the investigation? Sure, I mean, they could contact our office, but typically the Denver Police Department does the investigative work. Um, so if they contact our office, that's fine. We will refer them to the investigative team at the Denver Police Department. Um, they can also contact, I think, um, the phone number that Commander Clark gave um, would be one way also to get in touch with the Denver Police if people feel like they have additional information, or if they have have concerns about the remains that they got, the cremains, um, or if they if they feel like they have a possible claim. Thank you. One more, just for Commander Clark. You you had said that, that molecular testing is tough to do. Yes, sir. Um, but could be done. Is there a reason why it's not being done? It's it's a very resource intensive process with a very low likelihood of success. Um, and it would, uh, we have some very serious cases being processed by the Denver Police Department's lab, the state labs, um, that would uh, potentially push those cases uh, to, a, you know, put them in a line. And so we're focusing uh, right now on re reuniting people, uh, families with the remains that we have, and, and then helping them process moving forward. But we're not in the, we don't have the, the ability at this point to, to undertake that.